In 2007, um, there was a virologist at UMass. My daughter finished her master's about then, and she was, she was one of those people that could pull molecules apart and, and molecular DNA and RNA and stuff. And they said, to me, well, how can we find some bees, Wayne, so we could test for viruses? And one of our committee members said, well, gee, that would be really hard. <laughs> so I started bringing them up to, to a group up there. John Moran was the one that, that, that I brought them up to. So we collected samples. You, know, you see the sample nine. It was put together, too. It's a two-year high. These are some people who live near Cranberry Bogs in, um, in, in um, Freetown. And they had treated, you know, screen bottom bod, no varroa, no trachea, white. I went through them. We had the queens. I wish they had tested them, but they never did. Uh, what we had collapsed in 2 8 completely, I found the queen. The virus is black queen cell deformed wing virus. That's probably the big one you're hearing so much about right now. And there's actually 36 genotypes now in the United States. This is stuff my daughter specializes in, but I know it as well. Uh, acute uh, Israeli acute paralysis virus came in from New Zealand. He lost his grant because of this. $175,000. I sat on a committee that had recommended him and I got bounced. Not that I got paid, but shot in my work day. Uh, then I was just even more pissed off than I was before. Uh, here's another one down in that area. Same thing. Boom, 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 boom. We've got some viruses here. Black queen cell, deformed wing, and, and such. So, okay. There we go. This, this to me, is the next, next big step. I mentioned it kind of. In 1990, we had a huge biological shift on Nosema. And so in Nosema, we went, we went to... And, 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 there were probably about 1960 in the Philippines, there was a jump of it from the Asian honeybee. And when we brought some of the, uh, our Italians back, they had it. And it spread across this fine. I was actually doing those type of samples in a lab at my house. And I noticed it shifted from brown to oval. But no one was talking about it yet. It wasn't until recently that the USDA, a bunch of us had figured it out at that point. If I know more, my daughter would have done some molecular work because she went off in another direction. But, okay. So we are down to almost the pesticide down to the pesticide and sample of wax. Oh yeah, so this is I got these out of order. Maybe I'll fix these. Yeah, maybe I won't. Make me some change. This is nosema, one one with and one without. It's an intestinal parasite, and it's not one that belongs in our normal honeybee. Um, what can handle it? The conica bee, the bees from Sylvania, they don't have a problem, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more, but you can see that's a pretty good infection. You notice all of a sudden, this was one from the mid early 90s and also in the oval shaped. I got this off a of USDA site where they started talking about it. I went, well, isn't that interesting? Someone knew. They didn't have the molecular techniques to figure it out, but that's where we go. So how much problem do you think this is? It was awful. This is a, this is a plus one. You can get a few names. You can go look that one up. It's, it's free. You can go get this publication I have in my home. I can send it to you. And it's devastating what it did to the bees. Look, look at the damage in here. Look, look at the, look at the, some of these curves. And this is incredible how much damage it's doing. And everybody knows this, except everybody wants to do anything about it. And for me, that, this, this, this here was a, kind of an awakening for me. We also know when, when, when they get in there. The only thing that's really bad with, with some of the um, uh, Monsanto's uh, weed, weed killers is it messes around with this particular one. It makes it more interesting. I was talking to beekeepers up in Vermont. And we, we were discussing one day, and they were down in Bristol down here, and they, they were asking me a thousand and one questions, and, and some, of the, I, some of the areas had problems. I said, well, is your corn till or no-till? And they went, no-till. Well, that means they spray to get rid of the weeds. Till means it's all right. And he went, you do know there's an association between, between this and, and, and any, any of the herbicides. He didn't move his bees out. And this is Vermont where he was having problems with Nosema. And the state there went around and that's how they found it. And that's a classic question I'll ask them, like, till or no-till? And Dighton has a lot of no-till. I don't know, I don't think I threw those in. So, here's one with some frippinils in a slightly different class, but these two things are basically neonics. So there are publications on there. You say there's nothing that documents the fact that there's problems if you, if you, if you, if you use neonics, Nosema serrani gets worse. So now we have two steps that no one really wants to talk about. Really, no one. They do get, it's one of the reasons we're taping tonight, but anyways. Uh, it's not. So we see that. So right. does it suppress the immune system of the bee so that well, the nosema just runs rampant? That's what you suspect, or something else changes we don't understand. But there's no research on that. So I'm not going to come here and tell you something I haven't seen real research. I put the publications up. Don't we have people that kind of do stuff like that? 
you no. got to trust your universities. Yes, but that. their grant money is <laughs> dependent <laughs> on um, factors no that No comments out of me with a camera running. <laughs> They want their uh, yeah. their grant money is contingent on um, factors that preclude them from um, following um, those pathways. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm here with the facts. <laughs> you know, I got the publication Joe Friday. <laughs> Anyways, I'll write. Now we all know how Brother Adam brought. And he did. He brought in all these different species, you know, subspecies down there, and some survived. Buck fast. And, and they always told us this, this was an acrine disease, this was a tracheomite disease. Well, the virology, the people like my daughter that take this molecular stuff apart, not her, another lab went, went to museum specimens and looked to see what was in them. Serenier. That's what was in them. Amazing stuff. Um, I was, that was one that wasn't supposed to make it out to publication either. And I went, okay, how does this apply to Europe doing so much better? Fortunately, we had somebody traveling to Slovenia. Okay, so our bees are nosema intolerant, yet the Slovenia bees... Which are required, which are conica. I'm going to show you the map in a minute. Now you know why our bees are getting darker. Yeah, because the genes from the darker Slovenian bee... Dark bees outnumber in New England and that. Now I have some discussions with people from Florida that go, well, the bees went to better down there. Well, no kidding. My dark bees made it really well. The dark bees do extremely well. So I'm pointing at people in directions. You can make your own choices. You can call me a crackpot and move, move on and move on to the next step. 